is there knowledge that can still be received today? New knowledge. Let me take them, because you already know, I don't have to tell you. Let me tell them. That Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. He said that Nabuwa or prophethood is comprised of how many parts? Help me somebody. 46 different parts. This young man traveled all the way from Britain to be with us here tonight. Won't mention his name for security reasons. He got to go back to Britain. <laughs> Prophethood is comprised of 46 different parts. He said, after me, not me, eh? the prophet, <laughs> after me, nothing remains of prophethood in the world except one part. And that one part of Nabuwa of prophethood which is still here in Masjid al Gufran, in Tamantun Dr. Ismail, in Kuala Lumpur, is Ru'ya Sadiqa and Ru'ya Saliha. Good visions and true visions and good dreams and true dreams. And they still remain in the world up to this day. And so knowledge can still come to us now. New knowledge. And that knowledge comes from Allah. And that knowledge has the status of being the last part of prophethood still remaining in the world. They cannot critically respond to this. No sir. Of course, when that knowledge comes, it does not have the status of the Qur'an, no. It is not binding and incumbent upon anyone, no. And so when someone shares that knowledge with others, you have to say, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. It is not obligatory, it is not binding, it is not incumbent on anyone. But new knowledge still comes into the world. And right here in this masjid I gave you an example of the Surah Al-Ma'idah. Remember don't take the Jews and don't take the Christians as your friends and allies. You remember? And right here I explained to you that Allah is not speaking about all Jews and he's not speaking about all Christians. No! Well then which Jews and which Christians? And this was never asked before. This first time is being asked. And then I said the answer is right there in the words which follow. <laughs> Meaning, do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Jews and Christians were never friends and allies of each other until Western Christianity, not Eastern, not Russia, not Greece, not Romania, not Bulgaria, not Poland. Western Christianity, Britain, France, the United States, Germany, when these Western Christians joined together with the European Jews, to establish the Judeo-Christian Alliance which today has NATO as its military arm. This is what Allah is speaking about. Don't take them as your friends and allies. And if you do, وَمَن يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ You've lost your Islam as they've lost it in Libya which today is a Zionist state of Libya. Hmm? And so this is new knowledge. No one ever explained this verse of the Quran like this before. It's the first time. But does that mean 
because it is the first time it is inadmissible it is false not at all it is new knowledge I can I am sure it is the correct interpretation of the Quran but you must never be arrogant to say this is the truth you say Allah knows best Allah knows best and just present it and let the people decide 